Hello friends and family, my name is Skylint, and today's list video is on my pick for the best chill co-op games that you actually can play solo, and debatably are maybe better to play them solo. Keep in mind, playing solo does not mean playing alone. And with the world the way it is in times like this, a lot of people want to play online games. They want to play cooperative games, but sometimes they just want to chill, almost turn your brain off. They want a certain atmosphere, mood or vibe, and they want to have something that they can regularly jump into and explore and dive deeper into and not feel so alone. But at the same time, maybe you're not hooping and hollering with your friends or it's not like so intense, like a guild sort of meetup or anything like that. It's just something that you can jump into. There's people around you. You're never alone. But at the same time, you can kind of play at your own pace, make friends at your own pace. So you can play these solo, but not alone. They're co-op games, they're chill, but you go at your own pace. Have the fun that you want, which I hope you do. These are my picks. These are games that I have played all co-op and solo. And these are definitely the ones that are my first runners when it comes to it's late at night. I want to chillax. Let's jam. All right, guys. So number five on my list here for chill co-op games is Monster Hunter World, actually. There's alternatively a free to play game called Dauntless, which you could also play. And if you want to play co-op, I actually more suggest that it's easier to get into. But Monster Hunter World specifically actually is a really fun game to play through the story single player. But however, Monster Hunter, as you're first learning the game is actually pretty tense. It can be kind of stressful. And overall, uh, you know, it's giant monsters trying to kill you. Of course, these are still games. You still got to gamify them. I, I personally do like a challenge. But I found that Monster Hunter World definitely has sort of a formula. It, it almost feels like a rhythm game in some instances. And overall, like if you go in with a plan with a monster hunt, you just have to execute that plan. Of course, everyone loses a plan when they get swiped in the face with giant claws or fireballs or whatever. But, um, you know, it's still a really fun game to just run in. It's very repetitious. You run in, there's a giant freaking monster or two and you duke it out. And this is also a really cool game to play just matchmaking. So while you do have to run through and um, kind of play the game single player to an extent, you can actually invite people to your lobby or jump into theirs. And you're just kind of rinse repeat uh, constantly over and over fighting certain monsters. The game isn't as difficult or as nail biting, I think, as something like Dark Souls, at least especially leveling up. But overall, it is a game that is about efficiency. So you just kind of want to just play it over and over and over, hunt these monsters over and over, make it flashier, do it faster, do it more efficient, do it better. And so I really liked playing this game in a way that I normally don't play games. I normally don't do that. I play games like Bloodborne or Dark Souls and I, I kind of won and done it. But Monster Hunter is the style of game where it's about hunting monsters. And even though it is still a challenge, I really appreciate just kind of logging in like, you know, at least once a week, just having that one cool monster hunting night where I just kind of turn the world off, basically. And it's just me, some dudes or girls and a freaking monster that we got to hunt. And it's awesome. Number four is a brand new game, and I expect actually as there's more updates, and as I play it more, it'll go up on the list, but that's Deep Rock Galactic. I've actually had this game since the day it was announced in early access. I did some videos. It was fun. It was cute. I didn't know what I would expect for full release, but I've started playing it now on, well, 1.0 or gold release, and it's great. Yeah, this game is really fun. I'm not sure which class I'll main, maybe the scout or the engineer, but basically Deep Rock Galactic um, just hits a lot of notes that I want for a chill late night game. Uh, so it's sci-fi, it's dark, it's a little spooky, it's got that repetitive grind. I would even dare say it's like a looter shooter, like you are shooting and, and kind of, well you're looting but you're not looting from shooting and you're not looting guns, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, it just hits a lot of notes that you kind of want in a game that's like, okay, the late night grind, what's it gonna be? Deep Rock Galactic. Now Deep Rock Galactic is also great for just co-op, but I've been playing it where it's just me and then I jump in with a party of a few people and it's a really cool place to kind of make friends, I think. Um, there is voice chat if you want to do that, but everyone is generally pretty respectable. Um, they tend to use uh, typing instead or they'll lightly use chat, at least when I've played, you know, after midnight in America. But I do like just the hordes of enemies. Um, you're, you're kind of calmly walking through a sort of dungeon, procedurally generated that is and you're mining and um, it's just all about progression and it just kind of gives you a lot of feel good candy feelings. 
But then, yeah, uh, you know, you, ha you have a lot of monsters and there can be some stress. You know, you can fall into traps and but you have your teammates there to help you. Again, you're playing solo. You can also play this individually if you just want to run into missions all alone and just kind of get that aliens style vibe. Sure, if you want to play like a horror game, um, kind of Left 4 Dead-ish, absolutely. Deep Rock Galactic definitely has a lot of notes of Left 4 Dead, but I think that um, this one is a little bit more replayable, got a little bit more progression, and it just has a vibe that's a lot less intense and grueling, and it's it just is more chill. So absolutely recommend it. Number three, we're halfway on the list, I have Warframe. Now, Warframe wouldn't make a lot of co-op games list because in terms of co-op, I feel like it's a little awkward. But as a game that you can jump in and out of, and pretty much for all the reasons of Deep Rock Galactic, let's be honest, but as a game that you can play with like four other people or three other people, or you can kind of message around with the global chat, uh, you know, you do the alerts and you're constantly kind of playing with lots of different people, or maybe you, you kind of interact with a guild if you want to lightly. It's not an open world MMO or anything like that, but there are little pockets of socializing. But overall, in terms of co-op, it does kind of fail a little bit like Monster Hunter with mixed matchmaking. Some people are super overpowered, what have you. But if you just want a game where you jump in and you have that sort of mindless grind and the power fantasy is so ridiculous in Warframe that it makes it, it's basically like you're so powerful and you can do so much that you can set your own pace to an extent. Um, it is very chill. Uh, some people find it therapeutic to slay hundreds of enemies. And even though it is gory and it can be potentially really ridiculous and it can be intense that's true but overall you choose the missions you want to play you choose what you want to grind you choose kind of what you do in warframe and so if it's just fishing even if you just want to kind of mess around with the open world content if you just want to go and do the stealth missions regardless i i think that there is there's some form of chill that you can find in warframe that's a unique flavor because it's just ridiculous power fantasy frankly back in the day one of the games that i loved to play was dynasty warriors late at night you know sometimes it is chill killing hundreds of people it i don't know there's just something about it because there's there's a distinction between real life sports and things like that and then video games just because a lot of stuff is happening on the screen doesn't mean it's not chill. It feels really good. It kind of massages your eyeballs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it is a ridiculous power fantasy shooter action RPG thing. It can be played co-op, but really it's kind of fun just to jump in solo and just ping, ping pong around, you know? Number two is Elder Scrolls Online. And this is actually the game that half inspired this list. Number one is the other half. But Elder Scrolls Online is the first time where, kind of at the peak of when I was streaming and I was getting lots of viewers in between 50 and 100 viewers, that's pretty good for me. I actually was playing Elder Scrolls Online and I was going to do a full review where I streamed the entire game and all this. And I was having so much fun just listening to the quests and just really being so fully immersed. I decided to quit streaming. I didn't want you guys or anybody to really pervert my experience. I just wanted it to be me, the night sky outside and me inside and just just it being absorbed by the game. Elder Scrolls Online is definitely a great MMO for first comers to the genre. Um, and I think that it actually nowadays really merges Elder Scrolls and the MMO concepts really quite well. I think when it launched, it might have been the worst of both worlds, but now it's actually a very unique flavor and you can still distinctly tell it's got Elder Scrolls and MMO built into it. It just took a little bit to be refined, and I think now it's really getting there. I also think it's one of the most fair monetization schemes in terms of buying the DLC that you want. So this is really cool. A lot of MMOs add stress because it's like, oh, I got to do this and that. I have to, you know, catch up to content. I have to pay for a subscription fee. Elder Scrolls is like, you can pay a sub fee if you want and get everything. Um, cancel whenever you want, or you can just buy the boxes or you can literally buy the the micro dlcs like you just want to do the the thiefy style quests get that you just want to play the vampire stuff then do that and overall the vibe and feel of elder scrolls online is just at such a pace that it's undeniably chill absolutely freaking lootly um if you want to jump into dungeons or what have you so this is one of the greatest mmo to play solo uh, even though most mmo i would say you want to join a guild or you want to play with a party 
But this, it's just so cool just to run around. People are dynamically doing the quests with you. They're joining up and, and playing with you. The queuing for dungeons is easy. Um, overall, Elder Scrolls is also just a game that I think is actually really fun as a single player experience, period. And then you still have that sort of um, amphibious nature of, yeah, it's, it's single player, but also it's totally a full MMO, actually. So it's a lot of fun. I do like the quests, the darkness, the dungeon diving. And just overall, it feels like a great nighttime game, which I think all Elder Scrolls games really are. Um, and, you know, you'll be playing far into the morning. But yeah, especially with the MMO aspects, um, just kind of makes it for me personally. Let me know in the comments below if there's a different MMO that you think should have made the list here. But I think the thing that really just brings it over the edge is that you have a really fun amount of customization with your class, mixing and matching different abilities. Uh, on the fly all the time it's pretty easy to change roles and there's just a lot that you can do and experiment with while you're on the roller coaster ride of you know playing through the quests and just running through the general game there is just a lot of stuff that you get to think about in terms of lore the in terms of story in terms of your own character i just think that actually as an rpg as something that's immersive it's very well done much more than other mmo and my number one Again, this was the game that halfway inspired the list as well. Best chill co-op game to play solo is Fallout 76. And I mean that non-sarcastically, this isn't a joke. I understand the drama, the criticisms of Fallout 76, but I have to admit the time that I have had with this game has absolutely been phenomenal. And while I can say there are some objective faults with some parts of the game, dude, as a chill late night game that you can play with friends occasionally or especially if you are playing it solo and you organically uh, have players jumping in and pvping with you sometimes rarely it's you have to really elect into that or you know cooperating with you uh, sometimes you know boss spawns and uh, sometimes you're all alone sometimes somebody helps you it's really cool to have that experience that danger of it's like most mmo most people are in most places it's generally accepted it's going to be co-op, but Fallout is different. Sometimes you're going to be in areas and you'll die without friends. And so it becomes almost like a stealth mission or it's it's actually very much Fallout 76 is kind of a horror game. There's a tremendous amount of paranormal stuff that's really been unraveled in the Fallout universe. Uh, I think really starting with four and then obviously with 76, there's straight up like there's cryptids. And that's kind of what I do. Uh, this is my late night cryptid hunting game. And another thing that is kind of nostalgic a bit and reminds me of back in the day um, is you listen to radio a lot. The, the radio is part of the mechanics of the game. So basically what you're doing is you're kind of just strolling around, uh, just kind of discovering different areas organically. Um, and it's all creeping and crawling. And it is a looter game. So you also have everything that we've talked about for all the other games where it's like, yeah, that, that consistent progression. You can always level up. You can always come back and do something more. Customize your character, play in a different way. Um, you have the jump in, jump out kind of amphibious nature of the multiplayer. Uh, so you don't feel too alone. I also really love the base building. That's like a whole thing that I could talk about. But what I love personally is coming in and hunting the cryptids, listening to the radio, wandering the woods, the mist, the fog pulls in, and then all of a sudden a freaking, <laughs> you know, like who knows what actually comes out. Ridiculous stuff. I'm not, it's not like Sasquatches, but you know, you, you get Fallout's own unique versions of cryptids and things like that that are pretty freaking ridiculous. Like Wendigos are kind of horrifying to be honest, but Anyways, so I do like the bossing, I guess, of the game and Mothman was hype. The Mothman fight was amazing. And while it can be nail biting and while it can horror can sometimes tip over being chill, I think more often than not Fallout 76 is just a really awesomely paced, organic, chill game where, yeah, it can get intense if you want it to. But generally, the ebb and flow is totally controlled by you, the player. And then I love the dynamic events, and there's a lot of really awesome goodwill with the community. Well, I thought the community was actually so fantastic in Fallout 76, which is funny for like a survival game. But yeah, it's a survival game, and it's a little softcore to an extent. It is an open world game, um, but the PvP again is soft. A lot of stuff is very softly done, and the balancing overall I think is very fair, but there is still some challenge if you push yourself. So I really just like overall the feeling of late night chilling inside of this this world this map of fallout 76 and what can happen in it yeah so late night kind of spooky yeah chill yeah that's it's got everything that i want 
in games like this. But yeah, not to understate, um, when you're doing stuff, you're, you're pretty much gathering materials so that you can make a base. And that's actually way more addicting than you could possibly imagine. Trying to find the, the best place to build your home or what kind of base you're gonna have and stuff like that, what resources and yeah. And then actually just, uh, again, following the audio tapes and following the questing similar to Elder Scrolls Online is much more chill. And in my opinion, like r much more engaging, actually. I love audio tapes at least in a game like this. So yeah, pretty much in every single way, Fallout 76 is literally designed to be the chill co-op game that you can play solo at night. Anyways, guys, those were my honest opinions on the five games that I personally have played and will continue to play at night that are very chill, that I can always come back to. And it's always sort of like this uh, living world or there's always new updates. There's always something new for me to discover. So it makes sense that all of them are technically like RPGs or have RPG mechanics, at least. <laughs> what do you guys think of my list? And do you want another list um, possibly of just single player games? Because spoiler alert, that game is Endless Legend, a 4X title, and also Roller Coaster Tycoon. I think those are amazing games. So should I do that list as well? I know this channel is mostly for online games, um, which is why I'm trying to be creative with how I do these lists. If you had fun with it, you know, like and sub and stuff. And um, all I can ask is you peel some eyeballs on the Patreon and try to keep the hype alive. Hey, my name is Skylint. Hope you all had a good time and I will see you again next time.